more than anything is an analysis of power. And understanding that there are people in the world who have less power than other people in the world, to be really simplified. The original classic liberalism talks about, I can do whatever I want with my body, and Jacqueline can do whatever she wants, should what we do disturb the other, then we have to sit down and have a discussion on how we will solve that problem. Now, uh, Jacqueline is a woman, I'm a woman, but I'm a bit older than her. I don't know about her income. I think I have more income, because I've worked in the <laughs> At this point, I may not next year. But. So just between Jacqueline and my, me, there is a power difference, right? That we have to contend with if we're gonna discuss something. Uh, that is not taken into consideration in the neoliberal. We talk about equal relationships between the woman in prostitution and the man who purchased her. We talk about the buyer, the pimps, who are making the profit as business people, <laughs> or uh, careful caretakers, which is it said in some places. Uh, of course, the, the epitome of the neoliberal system are the legal brothels, and what we say about the legal brothels are, of course, that their women will be safe. Then, there they will have health checks. Now, if you listen to me in there, the system of health checks on women was initiated in France in 18. 30 around to ensure that men who bought them would not have uh, any illnesses. In none of these systems where they have legalized brothels, decriminalized the, the industry, have I ever heard that they're going to do health checks on the buyers. I think, and I would argue that, to make it short, that this is politics of resignation. This is to give up. This is not radical. <laughs> That is the least radical thing you can do in the world. Because what you also say, if you argue that women are in prostitution voluntarily, and I work with women who have been in prostitution, and I've always done that. Uh, in all the work that I've done for the past 15 years in this, there's always been women who've been working with me who have been in prostitution from many countries. What you say, if you're doing the voluntarily, you're saying, ah, you got yourself into it. You get out. I don't have to wor worry about you. Because if you have chosen, you can choose to leave. Right? Same shitty arguments as we had to contend with when we started to talk about battering of women. Why is she not leaving? Oh, you married to him, you leave him. All of that. I won't go into details. I also argue, and this is something we never talk about, I argue that if what you want to do is keep women in the prostitution industry, arguing that they are there voluntarily, you are standing on the side of those who profit from them. You're standing on the side of the multi-billion dollar industry that is global and is well organized, sisters and brothers, in the EU, where you can be accredited as organizations. We have several organizations who are fronts of the prostitution industry who are working the only thing they do is to lobby for the legalization of brothels within the European Union. That's the reality. Because they can see that all these discussions on the prostitution industry is an infringement on their business. Because if we win, like I, I would argue, and I will, if we at least are on the, the path of changing a culture of prostitution like I think we have so far in Sweden, they will lose profit. And they don't take that lightly, I can tell you having been threatened with all kinds of things, be, uh, included having my car burn blown up by Russian organized crime when we spoke out. <clears throat> and there's no human rights in this. Don't get that wrong. So the feminist human rights perspective, on the other hand, has a different view of life. The same view as we have when I started to work against women being raped in the 70s, we had a vision of a life where women would not be raped, right? And you all, you all work with that. Or that women actually should live lives where they're not violated sexually, most, emotionally, physically, uh, and on a structural level, not being oppressed and not have the same rights and opportunities that men seems to think that it's their born right to have, right? It's a vision of change. And if you live in a country like Canada right now, where the divisions between rich and poor are like they are, how can you, at the same time as you fight poverty, say that prostitution is a choice? It's a vision of change. It's saying that prostitution is not something that always have to stay around. 
that men, in fact, don't have to buy women all the time. Let me uh, give you an example. I was uh, in Barcelona a couple of years ago. Barcelona has legalized brothels. Uh, it's, a, it's a federal state, Spain, so they did that without asking for permission. And it's created a horrible, in Catalonia, it's created a horrible situation with tons and tons and tons of women who are trafficked into the prostitution industry from North Africa. I was speaking, I was debating a Dutch uh, woman who has been uh, central to pushing for the legalization in, in Holland. And when we were done, there was a guy in the audience who stood up, nice shirt, tie and all, and he said to me, but Senora Ekberg, all this sounds good, but what are we going to do if we can't go to women in prostitution? <laughs> women are going to be raped. <laughs> women are going to be, it's going to be terrible. Now it's confined, you know, yeah. now we just do it there. But it's going to be, <clears throat> I hear this all the time, by the way, this is nothing new. And so silence <coughs> fell in the room. I guess they got a little bit nervous what I was going to do. <laughs> but I just thought of it, and then I said to him, you have to take it in your own hands. <laughs> and of course, that was not a joke, because I really mean it. So what are the principles behind this? Well, number one, if you want to call yourself a democratic and temporary, uh, te not temporary, contemporary <laughs> society, because in Sweden we worked on, on lots of things on gender equality, equal pay for equal work, parental leave, you know, all of those things that make it better for women and make women less vulnerable to be abused. When you have your own income, when you can have your own place to live, we all talked about it, all of those things, then you will be in a better situation if you have men around you who will abuse you. Right? Simple. We say that prostitution is a form of male violence and that choice is not even interesting in this context. Choice, which is becoming a word, choice is the world of neoliberalism. It's an individual analysis of the world where you don't understand oppression. Choice is only possible if you have equal alternative to choose from. Otherwise, it's not a choice. It's an adaptation to the circumstances that you live in. Three questions, I promised you. The first question is, who are the, the women and girls? Because the majority of the victims of the prostitution industry are women and girls, but there are also young men and boys. This applies to them, of course. Who are they? Help me. Poor, poor women, right. Abused, Abused women. Women who come from countries where the legal, social, economic, and political conditions are difficult. Those who are victims of trans cross-border trafficking usually are those women. To Sweden, most of the victims of trafficking come from Estonia and Russia. Estonia, especially the Russian minority, being a woman there, you have not a job. It's very difficult to get education. It's very difficult to take care of yourself and if you have children, of your children. And that's where the pimps go because they know the women don't have an independent life that they can take care of themselves. And that's why women would be more vulnerable, of course, in that context. And that is the same for local prostitution. We know that women who come from already marginalized groups, women who are oppressed and racialized, we know in Canada, and you know that, but that the majority of the women in street prostitution are of Aboriginal background. Studies that have made, been made on, in Sweden and in 16 other countries have been interviews with women mostly in brothel prostitution and escort services, but also women in the street, and that's where the numbers come from. It's huge studies that have been made because we try to do that. Uh, it's important to do that. It's important to talk to women in prostitution and actually ask them of their backgrounds and why they end up there. And by the way, in all of these studies, there was also a question saying, if you w had a real choice, would you stay? And 98%, I think it was, or 95 said, absolutely not. 